All right, welcome to a brand new video of the Target Individual Program. Hold on, let me fix my, I have my mask underneath my chin, so let me just fix it here. Uh, when I go inside the store, I'll put it up. Um, just going outside just to get a little bit of uh, groceries for the weekend. And uh, so I come out my apartment and the super is my build of the building is waiting there. Now lately I've been noticing that I've been seeing them quite frequently now when I uh, leave, okay? Um, particularly at particular times, right? And he's standing there. I'm thinking he's trying to get in the building. I know he has the keys. I'm like, why is he standing there? And he's literally standing there just doing nothing. So I figure, okay, they probably uh, activate him to uh, come because they know I'm going outside to uh, go to some, hear the sirens now. Yeah, the sirens so as i uh was coming out again he's staring uh let me see if i have my unk my chain out actually nope my chain is not out so well, he was staring at my neck now I'm, I'm wearing a gray and white sweater so maybe it's the color okay maybe it's the color it's a v-neck uh gray and white sweater <laughs> okay so maybe it's the color. We know how, as I talk about the the TI, how they, um, you know, engage in the the whole uh, color thing, right? How they brainwash you and uh, using uh, dark psychology, particularly dark NLP, right? To create within your psyche uh, triggers and anchors and um, you know, like I said, a lot of us use these terms, don't even quite understand uh, what it is. And uh, we may we may have some, a little bit of understanding, but we don't totally understand what it is and how these things are embedded in our subconscious minds, right? So uh, when it comes to psychological programming, what they do to your... Um, what they do in your subconscious plays itself out in your conscious mind, okay? So a lot of our behaviors, a lot of the way that we think is based, a lot of it is based on our subconscious programming. You know, things, we go through trauma, the mind, uh, in order to protect itself from reliving trauma, will bury things in our subconscious, and then we're triggered when certain things happen, bringing those things into our conscious minds, okay? And even, you know, like I said, you know, we, we do it uh, unconsciously, right? So, again, this is how they can program. In particular, I talk about the black community, the European community. Um, well, I should say within the black community, between in, in black and European people, uh, those, we are, sub, we are programmed you know, through various methods, right? And I talk about that. And I talk about operant conditioning. I mean, you understand operant conditioning and then you look at that sort of uh, psychological conditioning and how when you look at the black culture today, not just today, right? But for the past 40 years, the bombardment of negative uh, uh, messages also uh, using uh young talented black people who have um you know were creative in describing their environment their situation how they live what they're doing you know that was glorified right so why did it become glorified it became glorified because those record exec right again majority jewish right gave these young men and women a you know a push to the forefront of uh particularly black music particularly hip-hop uh r&b um you know so if you look at the situation today with r&b music um hip-hop music the biggest art the biggest selling artists today rap artists and r&b artists are white people okay <laughs> you know what i'm saying so understand how they do these things and how they you know, they play the long game, okay? Just remember, uh, country music, created by black people, rock and roll, created by black people, 
okay? Uh, bluegrass, all these sorts of music, jazz, created by black people. And when you look at who, who controls those spaces in terms of music and who are the biggest artists of those genres today, and they are not black artists, okay? And I talk about this, we as black people, we don't, we don't think about the next generation. We don't sacrifice for the next generation, but they do at our expense, <laughs> okay? So again, you know, it is what it is. So also, um, when we're talking about, uh, again, I talk about operant conditioning, you know, um, putting, pushing to the forefront negative images, rewarding those that in, in, who, who put out these negative images, engaging in negative behavior, they are rewarded. So when Dr. Amos Wilson talks about our backwards conditioning, that's what he meant, okay? White people don't get wealthy off of acting negatively towards each other, <laughs> you know, they don't. Right? So why is it that black, why is it, and again, when you look at, again, who's, who controls these media platforms? Who controls, you know, and when you see young artists who are independent, though they're still promoting the same negative music, but, you know, there is no uh, white record label controlling the messages, controlling uh, the economic um, <laughs> revenue stream, yeah. right? though they may control the platform, right, in terms of social media, right? But again, they're not, you know, these young artists today, you'll see that, you know, they're being murdered. They're being murdered, and particularly when they put other young artists, or upper coming artists on game, right? Bypassing these record companies, okay? So again, but you see, things are being made to look as if it's accidental, it's a robbery, but we know it's not. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, just, just, just look at any black person who ever tried to do something positive for black people, and you'll see. They, it takes it either, either, they limit their financial opportunities, they limit their social influence, and this is why you see the wealthy among us don't do anything, you know, for the black community. You know? <laughs> I was just walking, watching Candace Owens, you talk about how you know, Dwayne Wade and, and LeBron James and all these wealthy black people, how they don't, uh, how they do not, uh, you know, build houses in the community that they lived in, and they all move into the white community. And I, and I said to her, you know, I, and I'm like, okay, you see, Candace Owens, at one point, was suing the KKK, all right, the alt-right. And what did they do? You see, they saw that she was on a purpose, right? She was on a purpose, and they wanted to change that purpose to get her away from that. And so what did they do? They turned her into an ally, right? Without her even knowing it, just as they do with Kanye West. All right.